While I thought this year would be a huge step in the Oklahoma City Thunder's rebuild, it appears that they have taken that huge step out of the rebuild. I thought OKC could be a 5-8 to eight seed, but Shea, Chet, and the Thunder are looking like they could begin their grasp on the upper echelon of the Western Conference. The Thunder are currently 23-10 and 10 and second in the West while not even being close to their ceiling in many aspects. The obvious reason is that the whole core is extremely young, but the underlying reason is their draft stash. OKC has put themselves in a situation where essentially anyone who becomes available can be theirs if they so choose. While this team is great as is, I think they are one move away from potentially being a championship team right now. Today I'm going to be going over the Thunder's arrival and what this could mean for the rest of this year and beyond. Before we get into this, if y'all could like the video, sub the channel, and hit that noti bell, I would really, really appreciate it. It would help me out a ton. Small NBA YouTuber trying to grow, and without further ado, let's get right into the video. In my previous video about the Thunder, I gushed over the Thunder's future potential and flexibility. While I always thought the Thunder would be elite at some point, never in a million years would I have thought that this team would be top tier already. As I said, I thought this season would include OKC in the playoff picture, but their sudden rise has me thinking they will be doing more in the playoffs than just participating. The Thunder currently have a top 5 offense and a top 7 defense, giving way for the 3rd best net rating in the league. The Thunder are also the best 3 point shooting team in the league, as they shoot nearly 40% as a team. Their 39.7% mark has them nearly an entire percentage point above the second place Miami Heat. While this Thunder team isn't flawless, I mean no team is except maybe Boston, having an elite offense and defense with some of the best floor spacing out there is a great formula, especially in the modern NBA. OKC has one current superstar, a future superstar, and a third guy playing at borderline all-star level. While I think this team is in a very advantageous situation in many aspects, which they should take advantage of, their roster as it is is still evidently very good. The leader of this OKC Thunder revolution is Shea Gilgis Alexander. Shea is currently playing at an MVP level averaging 31-6-6 and on great efficiency. While he is shooting nearly another whole three-pointer a game compared to last season, Shea's game is very different from most modern guards. He has a methodical mid-range and at-the-basket game, which makes him, in my opinion, one of the most fun players to watch in the league. He can stop on a dime and pull up from the elbow, or fake you out and go to the rim with a crafty finish. We've known about Shea for a good amount of time now, but over the last two seasons, he has taken his game to a completely different level. I don't know how much better he can get. I'm sure his playmaking and vision will develop further, especially as the Thunder get better, but I think this is more or less what peak Shea will look like, and he is outstanding. I will say, although I love Shea's game as is, naturally if he could implement the three more and more efficiently, he could reach yet another new level. While as of late, Shea has been about a 34% guy on more or less three threes a game, in the 2021 season, he shot 41.8% from deep on 4.9 attempts a game. Although the following season, Shea would shoot much worse on about the same volume, leading him to reduce his three-point shooting over the past few years, the 2021 stretch shows me that there is some room for improvement. While I'm not expecting 42% on five three-point attempts consistently, if Shea could even become a 36-38% to 38 shooter on about four attempts a game, it would do wonders for his game. Somewhat of an aspect of this also is that Shea is the clear number one option as of right now. He is garnering by far the most offensive attention, and even if he remains the number one, as Chet, J-Dub, and others develop, he will get better looks. Suggesting anyone on the Thunder will be as good or better than Shea may seem ridiculous to some, but Chet Holmgren is looking like everything he was supposed to be and more. While I do intend on making a video on Chet alone, be on the lookout for that, I still obviously have to discuss him here. Chet is currently averaging 17, 8, and 3 with 3 blocks on 54, 41, 83 splits, making for a true shooting percentage of over 65%. While 17, 8, and 3 are great rookie numbers alone, they do not come close to encapsulating Chet's impact on either side of the ball. Chet Holmgren is an all-star level player as a rookie, and that should scare a lot of people. While he's outstanding on both ends, I'm going to start with his offense. Chet is not only a 54, 41, 83 stretch big, but he can also put the ball on the floor. Chet's self-creation is real and creates a different level of potential for Chet. The efficiency of Chet Holmgren as a rookie is also otherworldly, and when you consider his shot diet, it becomes even more unbelievable. Chet is well above league average from every spot on the court outside of around the free throw line. While for the sake of time and my upcoming video, I'm not going to do a full breakdown, 
Chet's offensive package is potent from all levels in a hardly developed frame. Last thing, Chet is currently shooting 40.7% on 108 shots from 25 to 29 feet. Chet is a truly amazing player already and I haven't even mentioned maybe his best attribute. While Chet's offense is wowing and pretty, his defense is just as impactful. Chet is the only player on the Thunder above 6'9 who gets real minutes, and the Thunder have a top 7 defense. While the Thunder do have great perimeter defensive pieces, they also have a widespread of guard heavy lineups, and regardless seldom do you see great defenses without a great rim protector. While he is averaging an impressive 2.6 blocks per game which does have him top 5, Blocks or really any defensive metric can't really quantify Chet's impact. The amount of shots he alters blocks or prevents from being attempted in the first place is many and he is the anchor of a top 7 defense as a skinny rookie. The final player I want to dive into today is J-Dub, Jalen Williams. J-Dub is having an outstanding sophomore campaign so far and I think he's the perfect glue guy for basically any team. He is shooting 43.5% from deep, can defend, handle the ball, and go get you a bucket if need be. We began to see J-Dub truly shine on the back end of last season, and it is continuing into this year. He is averaging 18-4-4 on 62% true shooting while providing a little bit of everything for this OKC team. Shea is 25, Chet is 21, and J-Dub is 22. I think Shea and Chet are all-stars right now, and J-Dub can definitely become one in the future. While I will wrap up with a bit on the rest of the roster, first I want to dive into what I think this team should and obviously could do. Yes, you have a young team which you should let grow, but you also have a window. You have Shea on what has somehow become a cheap contract for a player of his caliber, making $33 million this year. You also have Chet and J-Dub on rookie deals. While the day will come where all these guys have to get paid, it is so far out currently that I believe the Thunder should take advantage. This team is already elite and you have a window to get in a veteran all-star that could legitimately make this team a title contender right now. I also haven't even mentioned the gross amount of draft capital that we know Sam Presti has been accumulating. This year and the two following, the Thunder will have a superstar, at least an all-star who will become All-NBA very soon, and another near all-star under contract for more or less $50 million total. This is the price of, in many scenarios, one star player for many teams that might not even get them to the level that the Thunder are at as of right now. Sam Presti drafted three MVPs and did not get one ring out of it. He has seemingly made it his mission to avenge this ever since his rebuild began, and I truly think he would be a fool not to take advantage of this. There is a very likely scenario where after Chet and J-Dub's rookie deals that the $50 million annually between them and SGA becomes $150 or more. The Thunder have a chance to add an all-star to a core that is all 25 and younger and second in the West while keeping most of their bench and key assets. Enough of my begging and pleading for a move, let's talk about who I think OKC should be after. The glaring hole with OKC right now is rebounding, and that is to be expected when your only true big man is a rookie that hardly weighs more than Isaiah Thomas. While none of these star names on the market currently specialize in that, there are two that I think would at least improve that while either adding a new element to OKC's offense, defense, or both. The first name I'm going to suggest is Pascal Siakam. While I understand objection to Siakam, hear me out. The all-around forward could help this OKC team in many aspects. He is a versatile scorer who can handle it and make reads. While his three-point percentage of about 29% this year is pretty abysmal, hear me out. For one, Siakam is still managing an efficient 22 a night even with this slump. Two, the Toronto roster really does not have the best spacing. Scotty Barnes and Siakam plus Jakob Pertl down low is far from ideal spacing, and Siakam was also arguably the main focal point alongside Scotty Barnes. In OKC, however, they have insane spacing all around, and the big he will share the court with most often will be Chet, who I think is well on his way to becoming one of the greatest floor spacing bigs of all time. This might sound crazy to some people, but given health, it's honestly happening without a doubt in my mind unless Chet gets crazy yoked and can't shoot anymore. Siakam's three-point shooting also returned to normal levels in December with him shooting nearly 37% from deep on about three attempts. Siakam's offense would add a different wrinkle to this team and make them nearly unstoppable, but his defense would also do wonders. While Chet is a phenomenal rim protector and guys like Dort and J-Dub give offenses hell, imagine if an already top 7 defense had some more help down low. Interior defense is necessary regardless, but especially in a league where you will very likely have to go through two superstar bigs to win a title. 
The put your power forward on Jokic and have your center Rome has also proven to be potentially your best shot at defending Jokic, and I think Chet and Siakam would be as equipped as anyone in the West, not named Rudy Gobert and Jaden McDaniels. I'm unsure of what exactly a trade package would look like, but the Thunder obviously have a plethora of young talent and draft assets to choose from. I understand the gripe with Siakam given that his contract is expiring, but I think that should OKC perform in the postseason as they should, that Siakam staying put is somewhat likely. My next suggestion is one that might slightly improve defense and rebounding, but would make this offense unguardable while also retaining cap flexibility. Utah's Laurie Markkinen has become a true star after being more or less an afterthought in the league. Laurie is currently averaging an efficient 24-8 while shooting over 38% from deep on nearly 8.5 attempts a game. While he doesn't have the best self-creation, an absolute sniper who can also score in other ways playing off Shea would be scary. Laurie would stretch out the league's best three-point shooting team even more and make it that much easier for Shea to get to the basket. Laurie will certainly cost more than Siakam as he is under contract for this and next year for a total of about $35 million, but I think it might be worth it. Trading for Siakam would mean that you pay him this summer and essentially wave goodbye to your cap flexibility as as soon as he's gone or before you have to pay Chet, J-Dub, and Shea again. But with Laurie, you can maintain cap flexibility for this offseason and potentially make another big move or a few supplemental moves for elite role players around your core. Regardless of if they pay Siakam or someone else, the Thunder will have the assets to get anyone they want, but if they were to trade for a deal like Laurie's, they could retain all flexibility. The final player I'm going to suggest is a bit out of left field, but I really think it could work. I really think Josh Giddy is the odd man out on this team and would go in pretty much any deal I've mentioned. I really don't think this is due to his situation, as the Thunder have allegedly been aware for some time. This is really just basketball related. Giddy is a jack of all trades, master of none that needs the ball in his hands, and I really don't think this is the situation for him. I don't know who will let him have the ball in his hands, but basically my point is I think it would be addition by subtraction for Oklahoma City in many ways. While the situation has died down and I don't think it's impacting the basketball itself much, it's still something you'd obviously rather not have in your organization or locker room. I also just feel like strictly basketball wise, Giddy should not be on this team. I say all of this to say that my final proposition of a trade target for the OKC Thunder is DeJounte Murray. While I also understand objection to this, like Siakam, you should also hear me out again. DeJounte has quietly transformed his game playing alongside Trey Young as he is shooting 38.3% from deep on 6.2 attempts a game currently after shooting 33.5% on less than 3 attempts a game for his career through last season. DeJounte is also a good guard defender, scorer, and playmaker who I think could replace Giddy in his role and be outstanding. Another aspect of a DeJounte move is his contract. While going and getting a max guy before you have to max other max guys is one way to go about it, going after a star like DeJounte on a lesser contract who you could keep alongside these guys then is another play. DeJounte is making between 24 and 30 million for four seasons following this one and could be a relatively cheap guy who could be everything you wanted Giddy to be and more. Another big reason I think this makes sense is the salary and assets it will require. I think there's a scenario where Siakam costs too much for an expiring guy and Lowry costs too much in general, and this could lead the Thunder to a simple move. There are many potential trades here, so I'm just going to go down the line. The first and simplest trade is just Davis Bertans and likely two firsts for DeJounte. Another crazy advantage that the Thunder have is that they have all their own picks that will very likely be at highest maybe 20 for the next decade plus. For a smaller move like a DeJounte trade, they could exclusively use these picks and retain their key draft assets. My next proposal is Davis Breton, Josh Giddy, and a pick for DeJounte Murray and salary filler. I chose Bruno Fernando, but there might be a way to get Sadiq Bey in here for some seconds, which would just be another scorer for this team. I would prefer to get Giddy out of here in this deal, but then again, in a bench role, he could potentially be more effective and maybe garner some more value. My final and probably most out there proposal is DeJounte Murray and Clint Capella for Davis Bertans, Misic, Giddy, and 1-2 first. I really think this deal might be the one in terms of improving this OKC team overall. With how good Chet is as a shooter, even if you don't start him, Clint can play alongside Chet without it being extremely awkward. Clint would also provide desperately needed rebounding and a true inside big man presence on both sides of the ball. I think a DeJounte, Siakam, or Lori move alone would help this team immensely, but a DeJounte Murray and Clint Capella deal would patch up every hole on this team while even having some addition by subtraction by getting rid of Josh Giddy. By the way, you also get off Misic in that deal who, I mean, this dude's a EuroLeague MVP. That man is garbage. I don't even like, <laughs> like, I'm sorry. I haven't like, you know, watched and analyzed him that much. Like I've watched a lot of Thunder games. I haven't really watched and analyzed him that much. 
But this man, like, the stats, the stats are crazy. <laughs> the stats are crazy. I'm sorry. I, 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 I need, I need to go pull it up now because I'm, I'm freestyling this part. I don't care. This man is, and I'm rounding here. I'm rounding, Th putting up two, three, one, and three on 30, 21, 67. Oh, dude, you're, you're not the world champs. You're not the world champs, man. <laughs> Anyways. Before I wrap this up, I just want to give the role players some love. The Thunder have nine people shooting above 40% from deep, which is just unheard of. While two of these guys, Lindy Waters and Davis Bertans, don't play much, having seven guys who play consistently shooting this well creates easy buckets for your stars. The two biggest supplemental pieces for this team are Isaiah Joe and Lou Dort, who put up about 20 a night combined on 42 and 41.8% from deep respectively. Sam Presti has built a roster for the modern NBA and it will lead the NBA into its next evolution. To wrap this up, I just can't believe the success we're seeing in OKC already. Shea is a bona fide superstar and Chet Holmgren became an all-star level guy the second he hit the court. If they can even kind of play their cards right, they should 100% get two, but I really think this team has the potential to be the NBA's next great dynasty. They not only have a future championship core in place, but all the assets to get whoever they please. Even if they make a big move now like I've suggested, the next time a top 10 level guy becomes available, it will likely be up to the Thunder whether he's there or not. I don't know exactly what the future holds for the Thunder, but I can say with almost certainty that they will get at least one, and it's not too often that you can say that. That's going to wrap this one up. If you all enjoyed it, please like it up, sub the channel, and hit that noti bell once again. I would really, really appreciate it. It does help me out a ton. Comment down below, you know, like, like what y'all think about this OKC team, because, I mean, this is just crazy. I don't even know, man. Again, I, I really think they should take advantage of this cap situation while they can, even if it's like, you know, even if, you know, I, I don't know, man. I really think any of these moves could really make them like championship contenders right now. And that's just like absolutely crazy. Even if they don't do that, I think like some supplemental, like I, I know like, you know, Caruso is going to have a ton of interest, but I think even if you replace Giddy with Caruso, that this team becomes so, so, so good. Again, I think they should get another big. That's kind of, you know, my Capella DeJounte thing. I think that could really help them. I think they should get another big, but I don't really think they need to. Again, you know, the Jokic thing, having more interior defense will help. Again, obviously, you know, as Chet, you know, fills out, He's already an elite rim protector. They already have a great defense. They're already great all around. It's just, I'm just saying, they have a really great cap situation right now that's not going to be there forever and a ton, a ton of assets that they're going to have to get rid of. And again, they have all their own picks. So even if they wanted to trade three first round picks, they could still maintain literally everything because all of their own picks are going to be, again, 20s at best. You know, late teens at best, maybe. Probably, you know, low 20s at best, if even that, you know? So... Again, man, this OKC team, just unbelievable, unbelievable development. Shea is crazy. Chet, I mean, I, I don't even know what to say, man. That's going to wrap this one up. I'll catch you on the next one. Go check out all my other stuff. Hit that sub button. I really appreciate it. Uh, if you're still watching right now, comment. I, I don't know, bro. I'm holding a USB-C. Comment USB-C, and I'll catch you on the next one. Peace.